It's at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Did you watch baseball? Good morning. Well, no, but I did watch this video that we're about to talk about. You know, the headline was it was a true catastrophe on Monday <laughs> evening. Yeah. No, it wasn't because, you know, the Yankees lost 7-1 to the right. Orioles. This guy, though, this is a real MVP. Yeah, uh, it's it, it took. Uh, people a long time to catch this guy. It's pretty funny. Uh, at one point, you can see the players actually uh, cheering for the cat. Look, there he goes up. So they think they get him there. I, I oh. hope we see this video. Yes, uh, they had him. Look at that. We need to sign him to the Cowboys. <laughs> Elusive. <laughs> He's very, uh, defenders had no idea what to do next. He's very fast. Yeah, this is the video I'm talking about. They're like, yeah, we got him. We got him. We got him. Uh, no, oh. we don't. We don't. <laughs> <laughs> players loving it. The fans chanting MVP. Oh, this is so fantastic. So, it looks I was like he's running to, home. Oh, and they got him, though. <laughs> yeah, they did. Uh, I had a golden uh, lab growing up, and this resonated with me because he would always run away, and we would have neighborhood basically try to catch him. Aww. It was always fun loving. He was just a very energetic young pup, and no one could ever get him. So elusive, just like this guy right here. I wish they'd give us a name, though. We can name him. All right, what do you want to name him? Uh, Speedy. Okay, Speedy. I love Speedy it. Speedy Cat, yeah. All right. Well, on that note, Let's take a look at today's 9 to 9. An update on COVID numbers here in Bear County expected later tonight. Right now, the rolling seven day average standing at 724 cases. New numbers set to be released tonight at 6 p.m. Louisiana is the first state in the nation to reinstate a mask mandate. The state has the highest positive case count in the nation, over 11,000 new cases being reported. Hospitalizations are also skyrocketing with nearly 2,000 people in hospital beds this morning. The Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, working hard to fully approve the Pfizer vaccine in the United States. All vaccines currently have an emergency use approval. Experts say full approval could come within just the next couple of months. Several major retailers now saying they will require workers to put masks back on at work, no matter their vaccination status. Home Depot says they'll be mandatory everywhere. McDonald's and Target say workers will have to mask up in counties where COVID transmission rates are high. Air quality alerts are in place for several states across the United States due to smoke from severe wildfires on the West Coast. The air particles can be dangerous to children, the elderly, and people with underlying conditions. Firefighters are making progress, but say flare-ups are still possible with unpredictable weather. Boeing Starliner capsule is back on the launch pad, scheduled to have a test flight around noon today. The weather could be an issue. Forecasters giving it a 40% chance that weather could delay the launch. The Starliner is eventually supposed to be used to take astronauts to space. And big news on the Olympic front. Simone Biles returning to the gymnastics floor today, testing her skills in the balance beam. She fell just short from gold and silver. She did win bronze, though. She got to the podium. Biles, the reigning world champ on the balance beam. This was her first appearance in more than a week after choosing to sit out, citing mental health. The Spurs have their first two deals of NBA free agency. San Antonio is expected to sign Doug McDermott to a three-year, $42 million deal. Zach Collins is also signing a three-year deal worth $22 million. San Antonio is rumored to still be in the mix for more players. And one of the largest Dia de los Muertos festivals in the United States returning to San Antonio this year. Muertos Fest will celebrate its ninth year in October in Hemisphere Park. The event will be free to the public. And that's today's 9 at 9. So glad to come back. I am too. It's a lot of fun. It also uh, gives the kids an opportunity to display their artwork through the schools. And I'm just wondering, like, I'm sure we'll see a lot of people with the with the full paint yep. on. Yeah, it takes a lot of work, by the way. It does take a lot of work. Yeah, I, we, I don't. I haven't done it. But I was gonna say, I know uh, <laughs> Tori, one of our. Uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, I've had it done, but mm -hmm. I haven't done it myself. It's impressive. It's very, it's very extensive too. Yeah. All right, let's take a live look outside of the Alamo City. 78 degrees out there right now. Justin Horn, what do we expect today? More showers? There is a chance, yes, a small chance. I think we're not going to see rain like we did yesterday, that's for sure. But there could be a few more showers and storms this afternoon. I think especially south of San Antonio. Right now we're putting in about a 30% chance. Uh, let's look at the radar, see where we're standing right now. We've got uh, showers and a few storms down there south and east of town. Most of this is pretty light, though, not causing any problems. We'll zoom in a little bit closer to those showers stretching between Kennedy and Cuero this morning. 
and then uh, more showers and maybe a few thunderstorms up there around Howitzville. Had some rain around Shiner earlier. Gonzales, that has since dissipated and a few more showers there north of I-10. Uh, isolated stuff through the afternoon. We'll see that again tomorrow. Maybe a little better chance as we get into Thursday. Temperature wise, we're sitting at 80. Yesterday we stayed in the 80s all day long. Today we are forecasting to get up near 90. And look at this. Mold 17,080 actually went up from yesterday. If that's even possible, it's in the very high category with all the rain. Mold has been there almost every day in the large numbers. Uh, forecast for today again 30% shot at some rain noontime through about five o'clock. Your high temps are close to 90 northeast, surely winds five to 10 miles per hour. Coming up in just a little bit, guys, we're going to take a look at the tropics. What's going on out there? It's been quiet all of a sudden. Is there anything developing? We'll let you know coming up in just a bit. All right, sounds good, Justin. A lot of people dealing with that mold. Taking a look outside with TransSky, there's a look at I-35 of Flores, I-10 at De Zavala. Things are moving. One of our top stories this morning comes from our Defenders team. Just published this report on KSET.com. Information they found says more than 100 San Antonio police officers received overtime pay in 2020, money that came from coronavirus relief funds. Right, federal funds. Some officers made more than $20,000 in overtime pay, all coming from the CARES Act, which gave San Antonio $270 million for local government relief. Data showing the San Antonio Police Department used over half a million dollars of the $992 million that went towards overtime expenses in the city. The second largest bulk of overtime pay went to Metro Health employees, but at a much smaller cost, only $283,000. Also included in the report, aviation employees, 311 call center employees, and code enforcement. For a closer look at the numbers, we have the full report with an interactive graph posted right now on KSET.com. Now to the latest in the Otis McCain trial. McCain now convicted of killing San Antonio Police Detective Benjamin Marconi. In the punishment phase, the prosecution is attacking McCain's character and talking to the mother of his child. A drug dealer and a bad father is how the prosecution described Otis McCain in testimony on Monday. Larry Hill took the stand, the grandfather of McCain's child. He claimed McCain was never around and even said the baby was denied that the day the baby was born, he denied being the father. And McCain's ex-girlfriend says during their relationship, McCain was physically and verbally abusive towards her. She also told the courtroom about an incident where McCain grabbed the steering wheel as she was driving with their one-year-old son right in the back seat. This is all part of the punishment phase. The jury will later deliberate whether to sentence McCain to the death penalty or life in prison without parole. The trial resumes at 1.30 this afternoon, and you can stream it live on KSET.com and the KSET TV app. An amazing moment at Methodist Hospital after Carlos Gonzalez officially headed home after spending the last five months at Methodist battling COVID. That's right. Carlos was on life support for more than three months. The team there worried he would need a lung transplant, but Carlos says motivation to keep fighting for his life was to support his family and the success of another COVID patient in the same unit, same unit inspired him to never give up. That other patient, Amy Velez. I went over there and I, I met him and I spoke to him and I said, um, you can do this. Um, God's got your back. And um, I'll keep praying for you. I was asleep for two and a half months. Didn't know what happened. Just started waking up. Encouraged by Amy, Carlos knew that he too would make it out of the hospital and make it back home with his three-year-old son. A few weeks later, Carlos's health progressed. He was ready to be transferred to inpatient rehab. It was there that Carlos was told he was in the same room that Amy recovered in. He called it the warrior room. In Jordanton, a frontline worker is leaving a major impact on COVID-19 patients at Methodist Hospital South. Now, it may not be part of his official job description, but Luis Gomez is going above and beyond to bring joy, hope, and even gifts to those who face one of their toughest battles alone. Alicia Berrera has more on the work and connections being made by one of the hospital's finest employees and how it's given so much peace for one family. In the halls of Methodist Hospital South in Jordanton, Luis Gomez is a familiar face. I do uh, clean patient rooms. His official job title is housekeeper, but it's his vocation as a patient advocate that makes him unforgettable to patients. As I clean the rooms, I talk to them, and then I just add a little bit more and uh, try to make them smile and feel comfortable. You see, hidden inside his pockets are items that not only reflect his faith, 
but also his love for all and especially the sick. I hand out little things for them, word or stuff like that. Uh, you know, get you know, get them out of the hospital a little bit. Mentally, at least, and he did just that for COVID patients like Maureen Stinson. But in Christmas, I got all the COVID patients presents and uh, a little Christmas tree, bears, little things, cards. And when she saw the bear, she was super excited. The two developed a close friendship through visits and prayer. I told her, I know you can't have Christmas with family, but I'm bringing Christmas to you. She was full of, you know, life in there. So it was, I was happy to see that. And even when she was leaving, she was all, bye, bye. By January, Maureen had recovered from the virus and was transferred back to a nursing home. She told me, I wrote you a letter. And I thought she left it in the room because I'm the one that was going to go clean the room. I never found it, so I just left it at that. The letter had ended up in a box, later to be discovered by Maureen's daughter, Melissa. And it was folded up. I open it and it's in my mom's handwriting. And um, she's thanking a Lewis and for a, um, a stuffed animal. Dear Lewis, thank you for this pretty ornament. I will treasure it always. You are extremely thoughtful. I love my little bear. I'm going to take good care of it. I love him. I'm so glad we met. My writing is not good because of my hand that I hurt. Thank you again, Maureen Stitson. Maureen had passed away in February due to complications from COVID-19. The damage had really been done um, to her heart and her lungs. She, she was an amazing woman, very strong, willed, very um, caring, loving, was a teacher for many, many years. Maureen's children were so touched by Luis's care for their mother that Melissa wanted to personally deliver the letter to Luis at the hospital, which he now safely keeps at home and plans to frame. It's still emotional, of course, and it is emotional for so many others, but this story has just this opportunity to, to reach out to him and be with him and know him and um, it's been um, wonderful. So yes, it has helped us with some closure. I think it's just a sign of God telling me this is where I belong. This is where I'm needed. Luis was actually able to attend Miss Maureen Stinson's memorial service just a few, a few weeks ago and got to meet more of Maureen's family. And of course, they're also thankful for the love and care she received during her stay at Methodist Hospital South. Max and Stephanie. All right, so Alicia, we're curious to know, uh, you know, what items Luis carries in his pockets and why he started doing that. Yeah, so it's something that really just came naturally for him. He's celebrating his fourth work anniversary this month, and he tells us he buys prayer cards, paper clips, word search books like we saw, and even little keychains. Right away when we, we met, he actually gave me one, and it's just something that he does out of the kindness of his heart. He pays for it with his own money, and again, it's just his way of connecting with those um, around him. He knows that these small gestures can really bring a lot of joy and happiness, and especially meaning to his friends friends that he's made at the hospital and plenty still recognize him and thank him years later. Wow. M means a lot to the family. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you, Alicia. Thank you guys. Great story. Time now, 9-11, 79 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Boeing getting a second shot at the space race. The company planning to launch their Starliner craft into space today. Why the mission is so important. Plus, a knockdown drag out on an airplane. Wow, what authorities say led up to this tense situation. That's next in your headlines. Good morning, welcome back and happy Tuesday. In your morning headlines, a crazy situation on a plane. Another passenger gets physical. He had to be restrained. The First Lady of Haiti speaks out about the assassination of her husband and neighbors in LA are getting fed up with the way the city is handling that fireworks explosion. David Sears is here to explain all of this. Remember that around the 4th of July? Yep. They had that bomb truck out there, had those illegal oh. fireworks in it and they blew it up. Still having problems with wow. that situation. All right, we'll talk about that in just a second. But first, seat backs up, tray tables in their upright lock positions and seat belts fastened in. Oh yeah, duct tape. Oh. Apparently that's a new safety restraint on airlines and thank goodness this is video of 22-year-old Maxwell Berry on a Frontier flight. They're going from Philly to Miami. He gets loud and physical. According to Alfredo Rivera, who was on the flight, who shot the video, things got a little hectic. That's when he started to get aggressive and then basically attack the male flight attendants. 
Yeah, that was just the beginning. Things got really physical, and that's when he got duct taped to the seat. He was even screaming for help. According to Miami police, he actually got behind female flight attendants and groped their chest before being taped down. He was arrested, charged with three counts of battery. All right, it's been nearly a month since the assassination of Haiti's President Juvenel Moïse. There was only one eyewitness to that assassination. That was his wife. There are still bullet holes in the compound from the attacker storming the room where the president and his wife were sleeping. They shot the first lady. She believes they were looking for something in that room. They eventually found it. And then one of the shooters got on the phone, described the president, and according to Martine, was given confirmation and then shot him dead. The first lady believes there was a conspiracy to kill her husband. One clue, not a single gunshot was fired at one of the security guards. There have been several arrests, but Moises believes that the people behind are still out there. At your husband's funeral, you said, quote, the Raptors are still out there watching and laughing at us. Yes, what they did are. you mean by that? Yes, they are. Because no one is being arrested yet. The people that they arrest is, is the people that pull the trigger. They won't pull the trigger with no others. So the main character that we need is the people that paid for that and the people that gave the order. And you think that that person or persons has not yet been arrested? No. No. Moise admitted her husband did have enemies, but she didn't think they hated him enough to kill him. All right, remember when that L.A. bomb squad blew up this truck full of fireworks about a month ago in a neighborhood? Several houses were partly destroyed, but worse than that, two people have died as an indirect result. Several families had to be evacuated. They're in hotels. The two that died were unable to take the oxygen tanks with them, and that has created a problem. One person passed away last week, and family believes it was a result of the way the aftermath was handled. The 72-year-old had diabetes, and the family says that he wasn't getting the care he needed since they were in a hotel. Many families are still not back in their homes, and the neighborhood council is concerned about how long the city is going to pay their hotel bill. We have to organize to make sure that the city continues to pay for what they caused. We know that this explosion would never have happened in a more affluent community. Families of the two that passed are considering a lawsuit. And back to the rowdiness on the plane, if yeah. you haven't flown lately, you almost start thinking about that when you get on an airline. Flew a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Scary. It started crossing my mind. Yeah. Uh, you hope nobody acts You start up. watching the people as they pass you by going, okay. <laughs> is this going to be the guy? <laughs> He's the one. Yeah. yeah. And oh, they might be looking at us the same way. Oh, yeah. is this person going to start? I'd watch out for David <laughs> Sears. So, you know, just take some duct tape with you. You'll be all right. Yeah. Thank you, David. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, David. All right, time now. 919, 79 degrees out. What about you, Justin? Do you get worried when you go on planes now? Well, I, I'm like David. You, you're you watching know. people and seeing, uh, well, you don't, you don't want to judge, obviously, but, you know, <laughs> it does cross your mind. Yeah, you just hope it doesn't happen. Exactly. Yeah. And speaking of David, I'm excited to hear what he has to say about the Spurs. Oh. Jewish roster coming yes. up. We'll I get some opinions, here. right? Max Looking and forward to it. Yeah, yeah, we all are. Uh, we'll get to that in just a little bit. But first, let's talk about rainfall. It's been good so far uh, this summer. Here's an interesting stat. 7.19 inches since June 1st. Uh, that's, that's a big number. And the departure from average, we're actually uh, above an inch over the average, which is uh, nice to see for our summer here in South Texas. 22.36 inches since January 1st. And that's three inches above average. So we're in really good shape. The aquifer is going to start responding, too. We'll check in on those numbers. They should start rising after yesterday's rainfall. One of the reasons we are getting some showers and storms, weak frontal battery down here. And it's just enough to give us the lift we need. We're in a pretty good upper-level pattern, too. Winds are out of the north and the upper levels, and that tends to help us out sometimes to generate showers and storms. And looking at the satellite picture, we still have quite a bit of cloud cover and some rain here or there, although most of the rain starting to die down now, seeing a little bit less in the way of coverage, Victoria, uh, up towards uh, Carnes County. And as we look at the radar, uh, this gives us a better idea. We mentioned some of those showers and storms around Howitzville. Those have since sort of uh, dissipated. There's a big picture there. And uh, it's still some showers, lingering showers, north of Kennedy, between Kennedy and Floresville. This is all really light. As we get into the afternoon, once we get some of the heating going on, 
uh, there could be some more activity, but I think it'll be fewer and far between than what we were looking at yesterday. There's the scene outside here in San Antonio. 80 degrees, mostly cloudy. Dew point is at 71, feels like 84. And on average, by the way, this is our warmest time of the year. And we're talking about highs in the 80s and 90s. That is uh, another plus from all of this uh, weather that we've been getting. 75 Bernie stage, 80 in Holotus, 80 Castroville, 77 in Divine, 72 Lost Maples. And you're sitting at 77 down there in Laredo, which is a place that saw quite a bit of uh, storm activity yesterday, too. Uh, humidity tracker shows dew points are in the 70s. Uh, obviously, it's still very humid. And as we look forward with our forecast, this is 4 o'clock today. Doesn't show a whole lot, although I think there could be a little bit more than what this model is showing. And as we get into tomorrow, same story, isolated to uh, maybe scattered showers and storms. And that's going to be generally south of San Antonio. And then by Thursday, I think that's probably our next best chance for a little disturbance rides up the Rio Grande. And that may give us a little bit more coverage. But after Thursday, rain chances go away. It gets hot and we're going to see a hot weekend. I want to show you the, the tropics real quick. There is one area that we are watching and it's way out here just off the coast of Africa. And it is the only area that the Hurricane Center is flagged, about a 10% chance. It's low. One of the reasons we're not expecting a lot of development is because we still have a lot of that Saharan dust coming across the Atlantic that actually suppresses any sort of tropical activity. So as long as that's there, we're not going to see much. And you look at the names, we're still waiting on Fred. We were moving at a pretty good pace. But now it's slowed down and uh, we haven't seen much out there. There's not much going on at the moment. Forecast 30% chance of rain today. We'll see those highs near 90. Tomorrow, 92, 30% chance rain, 40% shot on Thursday. And then, as we talked about, a hot and humid weekend, temperatures in the mid 90s, both Saturday and Sunday, guys. Back to a regular summer. That's right. For the weekend. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. Yep. Thank you, Justin. Still ahead on GMSA at 9 a.m. How school shopping can teach your children a valuable lesson about spending money and not spending money. That's after the break. In today's Money, It's Personal. And welcome back. It's about 926. Shopping for school supplies can add up for parents, but it also op opens up an opportunity to speak with their children about what they can afford at the store. So did you guys knock out all your back to school shopping? <laughs> That's why I'm laughing. We just tried to do it all on Friday. Tried? Yes, tried, but there were there were things missing and there were some things that were overpriced that I know I could get cheaper somewhere else. Mm, all right, so yeah. in this week's Money It's Personal, Ivan Herrera has some tips to help parents discuss needs and wants with their kids before they head out to shop for supplies and of course clothes. When it comes to shopping for school supplies, your bill can sometimes go sky high when your children's wants take over their needs at the store. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is offering the following tips for parents on how to help their children understand shopping to make good financial decisions. First, explain to your children that you have a certain amount of money to buy the things they need, like pencils, pens, and school clothes. Parents can include their children in the buying process by showing them how to compare brands, the prices they're willing to pay for for items and whether they shop for the best value or the first thing they see on the shelf. Parents can ask their children what buying choices they would make after explaining the shopping process. When you're shopping around with your kids, ask yourself aloud, do I need this now or could I find this item for less if I shop around more? Finally, try giving your children a few dollars and ask them to pick out some of their school supplies items so they can get a real world experience. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera. KSAT 12 News. And a reminder that tax-free holiday for school supplies, clothes, and backpacks, and footwear priced under $100 is from August 6th through the 8th. I remember that was actually like my first live shot here in San Antonio. Oh, uh, tax-free weekend? Yep, tax-free weekend. Yeah, it gets busy. I know. Yeah, there are some, well, so for us, we had to get our school shopping done a little earlier because mm -hmm. we start next week. Monday already yeah. on August 9th, uh, but a lot of districts will start later in August, so maybe they can take advantage of that. Of course. The tax-free weekend, All definitely. Right. Always exciting, especially Academy. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's exciting for you. A little bit. Yeah. All right. 928, 79 degrees out. A lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. For now, let's go ahead and check in with TransGuide. There are a look at the roads there at 281 and Hildebrand. Things are moving. All right, and go Spurs, go. The free agency frenzy has begun. We're going to take a look at the new players headed to San Antonio. All right, good morning. Welcome back. Go Spurs, go. 
It's the start of day two of NBA free agency, and the Spurs have already agreed to some signings. That's right. David is back with RJ breaking down new free agents, new moves, and what we can expect today. Guys, already a lot of buzz. Wait, wait, mm. Steph, mm. it's free agency time. Have you have you <laughs> changed your outfit at all? Have you? you <laughs> for good luck. <laughs> are you working on your uh, your outfits for the new season? I, I should. Yeah, I'll be working on my design. I'll have it submitted pretty soon. Mm. Yeah, we're going to have some new is, jerseys in the pro shop. That is just as important mm. to me as the Spurs signing any players. What? what? Oh, is, is so, so not optimistic yet? <laughs> no, how she prepares for the season. Oh, oh okay, okay. Me. Okay. Her her new Spurs wardrobe. Yeah, that's okay. very important because well, we're all watching. Yes, yeah. and we got to get ready for some new players too mm -hmm. to yeah. hit the court for the Spurs. New numbers. Uh, some inter yeah, new numbers as well. Yeah. Not only the draft picks, but uh, Spurs. A couple signings yesterday, David. Uh, Doug McDermott and Zach Collins. What are your thoughts on those guys? Doug. I, I Doug. Don't, I just like the name Doug. <laughs> Dougie McBuckets. Oh. You got a guy named Doug. Yes. You got a guy named. Well, he Doug can are you throwing ball. shake because his yeah. first name? Now, so so Doug. <laughs> is is forty two million dollars richer mm -hmm. by that nice. by three though because it's over mm -hmm. three years, but he shoots forty percent from three point range. Yes. So he's automatically one of the best three point shooters on the Spurs when he shows up. <laughs> right. I, oh yeah, absolutely. Best. Yes. Because so, the Spurs were one of the worst teams in yeah. the NBA in three point Aww. shooting last year. He <laughs> walks in the door and goes, "Hey, I'm the best on your team." Right? Uh, automatically. So he's going to get some playing time because yeah. he can shoot the three. Uh, and then Zach Collins. Zach Collins, big man out of yeah. Portland. So yeah. big deal here with Zach Collins. It's kind of a risk versus reward sort of That's signing for the at. Spurs. 22 million over three years for Zach Collins. He was hurt all of last season, uh, but he's only 23 years old. Averaged about 7.6 rebounds a game, but also a good shooter, and he's 6'11". So size and shooting, those are the two things that the Spurs absolutely needed in free agency. We've got a little bit of that. Oh, we got some? Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll show that. <laughs> we is, got that some. is that what we're going to show? <laughs> yeah, I think Where we do that? have uh, maybe some video we, of we those can talk two guys. Over there we go. go. There's but, Doug but, McDermott but, right there for the Pacers. So does Bang. this concern you at all that a 6'11 guy misses <laughs> oh, no. a whole season with a foot injury. It's not a good injury to have, to say the least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it does a little bit. But, you know, again, it's not a super high contract. Plus, the Spurs still have the option to do what I think they wanted to accomplish, and that's maybe sign another big name free agent. Mm -hmm. uh, John Collins still there. They could still mm -hmm. offer him the max deal. So this is definitely risk versus reward here for Zach Collins. The McDermott signing, that guy's going to play oh, pretty yeah. much. He's going to be in the rotation for sure. We got, we, and, and if you look at the offseason in the draft, they got Weisskamp who can shoot the three. Mm -hmm. And then they got McDermott who can shoot the three. So they actually got some guys who can shoot the three. So maybe they won't be the last in the league this year. Uh, well, that's, that, that's, that's the hope. The right yeah. right? <laughs> that's definitely the they hope. They averaged like 28 threes. In they the were bad. And, and they were towards the bottom of the league. And they, they were, were like, really bad. I mean, everybody yeah. else is shooting 40 and 40. And the Spurs it's are the way the league's moving. 28. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so now here's the, here's the, the whole big situation we're going to deal with now. Right. What's the deal with DeMar DeRozan? Okay, and we saw that video earlier of DeMar DeRozan still out there in the market. And we also have Patty Mills still out in the yeah. market, too. I feel right now like if the Spurs and DeRozan wanted to sort of bring this back, run it back, we would have already had a deal. Mm -hmm. I think that they are waiting on this whole John Collins thing to happen, and then they will figure out what happens after that. If the Spurs pay John Collins, then they can't pay DeMar. They can't pay yeah. DeMar. They got, Spurs have still a, a lot of money left over. I mean, they, yeah. didn't, pay, they didn't pay Zach Collins mm -hmm. or McDermott all that much money, so they, they didn't blow their budget so far. Right. But they've got a lot of money. And... and if DeMar was going to be one of the hot free agents out there on the market, I think he'd have been done by now. He'd have well, the question is, somewhere. and you guys have both talked about it, signing trade options. Where yeah. could you guys see DeMar going, and what would you want in return? So there's an oh, option there. Big guy. Yeah, a big guy. That would be Laurie Markkinen. He's the mm -hmm. uh, Chicago big man, and so DeMar still could end up with the Bulls. Be there with Alonzo uh, Ball yeah. and those and that whole crew right there. So there is that option as well. But um, I think that right now it's been kind of clear that Demar and the Spurs kind of want to go different directions, but yeah. they're still trying to figure it and, out. And a sign and trade might involve one of the guards, but like like I said yesterday, you could probably give up one and not know you're missing one because they got so many of them. Now. Yeah. So I mean that might. Be Lonnie Walker, somebody like that? Yeah. One of those guards we just saw right there, Patty Mills. I think mm -hmm. Patty is out. Uh, <laughs> That's unfortunate. That I, hurts I, me, but yeah, uh, I, that, that does like a hot commodity. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking Several of Patty, teams. though. Lakers, Celtics, Warriors. Australia. Warriors? Australia set to play the United States. Yeah. In, uh, oh, there we go. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 
So there you go, pot versus patty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that that will be very interesting. Patty, of so. course, is uh, in Tokyo right now for mm -hmm. the Olympics. So mm -hmm. yeah, but I think Patty's probably out of San Antonio. So, so the thing we're watching out for today is obviously Demar and 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 what uh, what's going to happen with him. Yeah, it should be an interesting day. Yep. All right. All right. So you guys. Thanks, I don't want to lose anyone. Aww. Aww. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Wow. All right, let's take a live look out of the Alamo City. 79 degrees out there. Justin, did that answer all your questions regarding Spurs? I think so. I think so. I, so I guess it'll be raining threes next. Oh, oh. look at that. Well done. <laughs> it's a That'd be awesome. It's fun. I think that uh, every meteorologist in America has used that at some point or another. But <laughs> nonetheless, it looks that way. We're going to have some better three-point uh, three shooters for sure. Uh, let's take a look at the radar. Speaking of rain, we do have some out there. It's all pretty light stretching from Gonzales over towards the Houston area. And all of this is really dying down. I think we're going to see a break in the action for sure. They're about lunchtime, but we will keep in a 30% chance of rain today and tomorrow. Bumps up a little bit Thursday, 40% chance, then a 20% shot on Friday. Dries out this weekend. And looking at temperatures at this hour, 78 Port SA, 79 Randolph, 80 at the airport, 74 Bandera. Pretty nice morning. Yesterday, we managed to only get up to 87. We'll go a little warmer today, 90 your high temperature, but we will keep clouds around. 30% chance of rain, as I mentioned, and the northeast really winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll talk more about those better rain chances on Thursday and have another glance at the weekend, too, coming up in just a few minutes. Guys? All right. Thank you, Justin Horn. Sometimes in the newsroom, things get a little hectic. You just need a little bit of space. See? See what you're doing there? As nice you can job. see, we're getting plenty of space right now. <laughs> Welcome to space. But we're not the only ones today. NASA and Boeing are set to relaunch their unmanned Starliner vessel to the International Space Station. That's right. As ABC's Trevor Alt explains, the mission already facing a big challenge. On our way to space with our first human crew. Space is back in the spotlight. Oh, I love it. Here, catch. Billionaires Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos blasting off in their private spacecrafts. Now Boeing takes center stage at Kennedy Space Center. The Starliner set for liftoff, the company's second chance to prove it can safely carry a crew to the International Space Station after December's launch failed to reach orbit. And liftoff, the rise of Starliner. No humans will be on the test flight. Instead, they'll take measurements with a test mannequin aptly named Rosie the Rocketeer. If the mission is successful, astronaut Mike Fink is assigned to the first crewed Starliner flight. From the engineering side, a capsule is really, uh, is, is, is really a, uh, an economic way to go. The purpose of commercial crew program, whether it's a Dragon or a Starliner, is to get us uh, safely up to the International Space Station and back. Flying with him will be astronaut Nicole Mann, who tells us this year's slate of space launches will open the door for the future. This has been a very exciting year, and so we're seeing low Earth orbit open up to people other than NASA astronauts. NASA Administrator Bill Nelson says so far everything is clear for the launch. They just need the weather conditions to cooperate. Well, this is Florida, and it's uh, summertime, and we usually have afternoon rain. Uh, so uh, hopefully we'll be spared that. Whenever the weather cooperates and Starliner can launch, assuming everything goes according to plan, it should take about a day to reach and dock at the International Space Station. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. There you go. All right, so we've asked before. I'm going to ask again. Would you want to go to space? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Earth. That's fair. I would stay like grounded. to stay here. Oh, but our producer says Dylan he would like to go. go. Dylan, why do you want to go to space? It's space. What was his response? <laughs> All right, there you go. Great explanation. Thank you, Dylan. 941, 79 degrees out. I'm good here at home. Okay, that's yeah, what I thought. I like her. <laughs> Beating the heat during the San Antonio summer can seem nearly impossible. Many turn to crank up the air conditioner, and that can cost a pretty penny. Tips on keeping the AC bill down. That's coming up after the break. As you know, it's hot here in the Alamo City, and many homeowners are feeling the effects in higher energy bills. That's right. We've been pretty lucky so far, True. but the heat is common in this morning's Ask Angie segment. We have some ways to keep your home cool without breaking the bank. Hot summer day is the last time you want your air conditioning to break down, and running it on overdrive all summer makes that even more likely to happen. Now that it's summer, you want to make sure your AC is working, particularly if there's going to be a heat wave. 
So make sure that you check off your to-do list that regular maintenance of your HVAC system. A pro can come in and find issues before they turn into real problems. They can also advise you on the efficiency of your unit and help you save money on your energy bills each month. A simple way to save extra money on utilities without sacrificing your comfort is to simply keep blinds, shades, and curtains closed throughout the day. These actions can act as an extra layer of insulation to keep the heat out and the AC in. Also, think about checking your air filter, clearing it if there's any leaves or debris blocking the way. Simple ways to help make your home more energy efficient. You may want to consider adding ceiling fans to your home. They're relatively inexpensive, add great air circulation, and are pretty low energy to run. And a quick tip, make sure that they are set to run counterclockwise. This will help push the cool air down so that you can really feel it. Weather stripping your doors and windows also another easy, inexpensive way to save energy and save money during these warmer months. Weather stripping seals any air leaks that could be letting hot air in or cold air out. This can be a great do-it-yourself project or a simple task for a handyman. The average lifespan of an AC unit is about 15 to 20 years. So if it's been a long time since yours was installed, you may want to consider a replacement or an upgrade. This will be a big cost up front. However, more modern systems are more efficient and are likely to save you on your monthly utility bills. And if you're not ready to upgrade the whole system, you may consider at least upgrading just your thermostat. So a new digital thermostat will provide more accurate readings on your home's temperature, which means it can regulate the temperature more efficiently. What do you guys do to stay cool? Uh, <laughs> to stay oh, to stay cool? Mm -hmm. I'm usually trying to get it warmer oh. in our house. My husband's like, I think it makes it too cold. It's like, we need to save money and it's freezing in here. Okay. So it's it's the battle of the, the thermostat. Feel that. What about you, Justin Horn? I'm the weird guy that keeps it on 78 all the time. Okay, That's I respect weird. that. That's not yeah, weird it at all. saves a lot of money. See? But uh, it does get a little hot sometimes. We turn it down occasionally. But it does it does it does help with the bill. And it hasn't been so bad this summer, really, because yeah. temperatures have sort of been behaving themselves. We may get into some hot temperatures this weekend, though. Yesterday was great. Take a look at this picture. This was around sunset. Wow. Canyon Lake. Really nice. We got in a ton of pictures on a case I connect. This is one of many, but the colors were incredible. This was out near New Braunfels, and uh, we appreciate the pictures always. Colors were nice as we had some dying showers and storms working into the area from the north. Take a look at today's forecast highs here across the state. These numbers all below average for the most part here in Texas. This is not a typical setup. You would expect a lot of temperatures in the 90s. Triple digits on average. This is our hottest time of the year. Just not happening. We're expecting a high right around 90 here in San Antonio, but it'll feel like 96. It will get pretty toasty down in the valley, but that's really the one spot uh, that temperatures are really kind of uh, climbing into the mid 90s. Set up, we have a funnel battery in place, and that really has helped with temperatures. It's also helped to generate some showers and a few storms, although everything that's uh, developing now or has developed really starting to kind of fall apart. So we'll probably see a break in the action. And then once we get some daytime heating, some more showers and a, maybe a thunderstorm or two will pop up. There's a look at the satellite picture. Most of North Texas clear. We've got a little bit more cloud cover down here though, and that will help with temperatures today. As long as these clouds are sticking around, temperatures won't get too out of control. There are some breaks in the clouds as you get up into the hill country. Fredericksburg seeing quite a bit more sun, but mostly cloudy skies here in San Antonio with some sun shining through, as you can see there. 80 degrees at the airport. Northeast really winds at about 8. Feels like 84 when you factor in that 71 degree dew point. It's 77 Bernie State, 75 Comfort, 74 in Bandera, 78 right now in Hondo. And we're at 80 in Katua, 76 Kennedy. Uh, the forecast heat index. Now, yes, it won't be all that hot temperature wise, but there's enough humidity out there where it will feel quite a bit warmer. Uh, sticky uh, for most of the day, and that will translate to a heat index around 96 here in town, 98 in Pleasanton, 99 in Cotulos. So I don't want you to think it's going to be cool by any stretch of the imagination, but this is better than what we could be seeing. Uh, forecasts uh, around 4 o'clock today does show some isolated showers and storms popping up. I think there's probably a little bit more activity than what we're seeing here, but we'll call for about a 30% chance of rain. Same story tomorrow isolated to maybe scattered showers and storms. And I think the favorite area is going to be south of San Antonio. As we get into Thursday, a little disturbance works up the Rio Grande, and that should uh, allow for maybe a little bit better coverage by Thursday afternoon 
with some showers and, and downpours. And there could be some heavy rain mix in there in spots. Uh, but I don't think we're going to see the coverage like what we saw yesterday. Forecast calls for, again, 30% chance rain temperatures climb up to about 84 by noontime, 90 your high. Northeast Julie winds 5 to 10. And the extended forecast will go 92 tomorrow, 30% chance rain, 40% chance Thursday, and just a small chance Friday afternoon. After that, it's hot and humid. Temperatures in the mid-90s this weekend, but it will feel like it's 100 degrees outside with humidity. Guys. Okay, well, I will enjoy today and tomorrow, the low 90s. It's really pretty nice. Thanks, uh, Justin. San Antonio summer is what it is. It was coming. We knew it was coming. It has to. Yeah. yeah. All right, 950. Only 80 degrees now, though. There That's you. true. Enjoy right now. And imagine moving into a new apartment only to find a python. That's mm. right, a python. Unwelcomed visitor waiting in your bathroom. <laughs> it happened to one woman. We'll have that story next. This is the mural that inspired the whole If These Walls Could Talk series. I'm Katrina Weber, the story of MIG tomorrow on GMSA. And a quick look outside with Transguide this morning. There's a look at Loop 410 in San Pedro. The sun is shining, but uh, traffic is moving. Good news. Oh, yeah. A lot of people out and about on the roads there, Justin. They're not wet roads, though. Yeah, right. the morning commute was a little different this morning, a little uh, less damp. Uh, we do have a chance for some showers and storms, though, today. 30% chance. That'll be the case tomorrow. A little better chance Thursday. After that, though, things dry out. Temperatures still below average much of this week. All right, no triple digits technically on the graphic. Technically. It's just going to feel that way. Well, that's right. We haven't seen any yet this summer. Not to jinx anything, but. Right. We'll just power through the weekend. Speaking of jinxes, though, <laughs> we got a crazy story oh to tell you goodness, about. This poor, this poor woman. Yeah, she Ooh. found an unwelcomed visitor mm. in her apartment, a large snake. There you go. There's a picture. <laughs> it's hanging out there by uh, some soap, a clean snake, uh, I yeah. guess. <laughs> clean, so yeah, so a woman in Florida says she found this python in the bathroom of her new apartment. And while that would have been shocking enough, she claims that the python that she may have been living with reptiles for much longer than she realized. Yeah, she believes the snake uh, likely spent most of its time hiding oh. under her fridge while she was completely unaware. This python, by the way, yeah, is like four, four foot python. Mm, only in noticed. Florida. Yeah. Yeah, so this happened in Orlando's Baldwin Park. The previous resident left behind the four foot ball py python and apparently Skipper never realized it. Allie Skipper. So I feel so bad. So technically, she, Ali Skipper, was the uninvited guest of the Python. <laughs> because really, it's her domain. So wait, this this was this was not just some wild. No, no. this was not it's a like wild Python that got left mm. behind. Don't you have a four foot uh, snake? Well, why would you leave your snake behind? Like, didn't yeah, it? I wouldn't Aww. want to keep mine. I, would you move with the Python? I don't know. What if your new apartment complex was like no pythons? They so were roomates. Have, have a great, great day. day. <laughs>